Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to take a look at scroll view and scroll view reader in Swift UI. So let's get straight into it. So sometimes in your app you may have static or dynamic content that doesn't fully fit onto the screen. This is where scroll view comes in. A scroll view is a control in Swift UI that allows us to offer users the ability to scroll a region that is off the screen. So what we're going to do is actually add in a VStack with a for each loop. And you can actually learn more about for each by checking out my videos, breaking down identifiable and for each and identifiable in Swift UI. So we're going to create a V stack with all the numbers from one to 50 within a for each. But first, let's actually just create an extension that creates a view so we can actually split up our UI logic. So what I've done here is create an extension on content view and I just created a function where we can just pass in the index and it'll just basically return to us a text with the following styles so you can just see them on the screen. So let's actually add in our vStack now and for each so we can actually see this on the screen. So within our for each we're going to add in a range rather than creating some kind of source of truth. So let's just delete this and then just type out vStack. And then we're going to say for each. And then we're going to pass in a range like so. And then we're going to use our ID, which is going to be of self because we want the unique, um, each unique view to be a unique identifier based on the number that is being looped through, which is why we say self. And then our closure, which will have our index or item let's say item that's better and then within our for each closure we're going to use our function to create our text view so we're going to say create text view with item like so cool so now if you run your swift UI preview you'll notice that you'll see a list of all these numbers but you can't actually scroll it or interact with it and the you know numbers from um, 18 and below and are not visible and anything after 32 is not visible either. So in order to make this scrollable, what we need to do is actually add our vStack within a scroll view. So let's do this now. So on your keyboard, if you just hold down command and then click on vStack, you'll see an option called embed. And this option allows you to embed a view within any other view that you want to type it out. So let's click embed. And then you should see here that we have our placeholder to actually type out what view we want and in our case we want a scroll view like so so now the first thing you should notice is that our list has now started from the top zero and also we're able to scroll all the way down to 50 like so And you'll also notice that our scroll view actually exceeds our safe area in this example. So you can see that, you know, we're going past our safe area at the top and the bottom. So one final thing to clock is that on the side here, you actually have this bar. I don't know if you can see it. So if I just zoom in a bit more, you'll notice that when I scroll, there's this bar on the side and I can actually interact with it to actually scroll up and down. So if we wanted to, we could actually disable this bar and in order to do that, what we need to do is actually add a argument to our scroll views initializer to set this um, indicator to false. So by default, it's set to true, which is why it's visible on the screen right now. So on our scroll view, let's just create the initializer and then we'll have our option here called shows indicator, as you can see here. And then we'll set this to false like so. And now when we're scrolling, you can see that we don't have that sidebar anymore but it's also worth noting as well that when you're working with scroll views you're not just limited to vertical scrolling if you wanted to you could actually scroll horizontally and we can do this by changing the axes of our scroll view so before our shows indicators we actually have a parameter here we can actually define the axes and by default the axes is vertical so instead of it being vertical let's change it to horizontal like so now You'll see here that we've got an issue here 
where it's actually not laying these out horizontally. And the reason why that is, is because we specified that we want our V stack to be within our scroll view. And if you remember, a V stack lays out its views vertically. And if you want to learn more about stacks, you should actually check out my videos, Stacks in Swift UI, and working with lazy stacks in Swift UI as well. So, in order to fix this, what we need to do is actually change the orientation of our stack from a V stack to a H stack, like so. And now you'll notice that because we're saying that we want our axis to be horizontal and our stack to be horizontal, we're able to scroll through our items horizontally within the stack like so. So we saw our content being laid out in a scroll view, but what about if we want to control scrolling to a specific item within it? Well, we can do this by using a view called a scroll view reader. This allows us to programmatically scroll two items within our scroll view via the use of a proxy. So let's actually add in some buttons with SF symbols to handle scrolling to the left and right of our horizontal list. And if you want to learn more about buttons and SF symbols, you should check out my videos, buttons in SwiftUI and SF symbols in SwiftUI as well. So before we actually add in our buttons, what I want to do is I actually want to move our range out here to the top. So let's actually create a private constant for our range. And the reason why we need to do this is because our buttons will need to access the range in order to access the min and maximum, which we'll get to in a, in a bit. Cool. So I've just created a range here, which is a closed range of integer from zero to 50. And now if we just replace this with range, you should see that our view works the exact same way so nothing's changed so the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to embed our scroll view within a v stack so that we can place some buttons at the bottom here if you just hold down command on your keyboard this time rather than using the embed functionality we're going to actually use the option to embed in a v stack like so and i'm just going to create a bit of space so i can just see this more clearly and then what we want to do is below our scroll view we actually want to create a h stack with two buttons with a back and forward arrow. So I'm just going to type this out and then break it down. So now we have our two buttons on the screen here and they're just using the SF symbols back and forward arrows. But let's actually add a bit of styling to our H stack so that our buttons look a bit nicer. So I'm just going to give this a symbol variant of circle and fill. It looks a bit nicer and then also i'm just going to increase the font of our sf symbols to be title and then we're going to change the weight of it to be bold or oh, actually let's do black cool so now it looks more like you know nicer buttons well i think it looks nicer anyway <laughs> so you may be wondering why didn't i just move this stuff out into its own extension like i've done in previous videos so the reason why i didn't do this is because we actually need to wrap the whole contents of our v stack so our scroll view and our h stack within a scroll view reader so our buttons can access our property from our scroll view reader which is its parent what we're going to do is we're going to actually embed our v stack within another v stack like so and then our inner VStack here, we're going to actually rename this to be a scroll view reader. When working with scroll view reader, it actually expects you to use the, um, the argument which allows you to access the proxy to scroll two items. So we're just going to type here proxy in like so. Okay, cool. So if you notice this with your preview, everything's looking good. But what I actually want to do is I actually don't want this to be in the center. I want this to be... When you're at the start, I want this to be positioned here. And then if you go to the end by clicking the button, I want this to be positioned on the right. So what we actually want to do is position this to our bottom leading edge. What we're going to do is actually need to overlay this onto our H stack and apply some padding onto the bottom of it so that this area is tappable for these buttons. So in order to learn more about backgrounds and overlays, you should check out my video, background and overlays in Swift UI. So the first thing we want to do is on our H stack, we want to apply some padding to the bottom of it. And I'm just going to say 50 pixels like so. And then after that, we're going to use the overlay modifier. And then we're going to set the alignment to bottom leading. And then within our overlay, we're just going to copy all of this code here. 
and just paste it in there like so. So now you should see that your button is now overlaid to the bottom left hand side of this view. Okay, cool. So like I said before, we want these buttons to almost act as if when you tap on it, tap on this, it takes you to the start. And if you tap on this, it takes you towards the end. So in our forward and our back button, let's actually write some logic that actually handles doing this. So within our back button, we'll start off with this one first. What we want to do is actually get the first index from our range. So in order to do that, we just need to say if let. So if you look at our code here, we actually have our proxy now within our buttons. And what we're saying here is that we want you to get, when you tap on this button, which is our backwards, we want you to get the minimum, which in our case is zero. And then we want you to scroll to that index. You actually get the proxy that allows you to control where you want to actually scroll to. And in this case, we want you to scroll to the first index, which is zero. So you may be wondering, how does it know to go to zero using this min? Well, remember our for each is being used to uniquely identify each item and create a view. So when this view gets created and it loops through each item, zero, one, two, three, four, the ID for this is actually zero. The ID for this is actually one, two, three, four. So by us specifying zero, it knows that I want to go to this item with this ID of zero. And then in our forward function here, we're saying that I want you to scroll to the last item within our range here, which is 50, which we get by the max. So we actually just tap this button here. You'll notice that it takes us to the end, but we have a problem here. And the first problem is that we don't actually have our button to take us back to the start. And it's a bit choppy. It's not a smooth animation. So I want to fix that. What we want to do is actually wrap our scroll to functions within the with animation block. So let's do that now. So now if we actually tap this button, you'll see that we get a nice animation and it scrolls there. So how do we fix the issue where our buttons are not being shown on the bottom right hand side? Well, what we need is some kind of source of truth to tell us whether the user has reached the end or not. And depending on whether the user has reached the end or not, we will then change the alignment of our button to be either the bottom leading or the bottom trailing. So the first thing to do is actually create a source of truth for this view to hold whether the user has reached the end or not. So just above our range here, let's just say app. Cool. So we have our private variable called has reached end, which is a type bool. And this is going to tell us whether the user is at the end or not. So what we want to do is that when someone taps on either one of those buttons, we want to change the value of this to true or false. So if someone taps on the forward button, which is this button here, then we have reached the end. So after our with animation block, we're going to say has reached end true. Now the reason why I didn't put this within the with animation block with the proxy scroll to is because I don't want to animate this moving left and right. I think it might be a bit jarring. So what we're going to do here in our other button is that if someone taps on this, then we're going to say has reached end false. Now, like I said before, we need to change the alignment based on whether the user has reached the end or not. So let's use a ternary operator here. So we're saying here with the bang operator is that if the user hasn't reached the end, so if at the start, then we want it to be bottom leading or else if they has read the end, then we want this to be bottom trailing, which is the bottom right hand side. So now let's actually test this out and see what happens. So if I actually tap on this now, you notice that we now have our button being shown here towards the end. And if we actually tap on this, you'll see that we now scroll all the way back to the start like so. So you may be wondering why and where would I use this over something like a list? Well, it's worth noting that when you're working with lists, you don't actually need to specify the scroll view. And for me, the general rule of thumb that I tend to follow is that if I have a small number of items that I need to add some scrollable content to, let's say like an in-app purchases view, then for me, it makes more sense to just keep it simple and have a V stack with a scroll view. Now, if I had a, you know, in-app purchases view that had more than, I don't know, 50 items in a list, which 
you know, I don't know why that would be possible, but let's say that's possible, then I would actually use a lazy V stack as opposed to a V stack. But let's say I have a large collection of items that are all related, like Facebook has like a feed of posts, then to me, it makes more sense to use something like a list. All right, cool. So that's everything in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as hitting the subscription button and the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.